All right, um, we will call this meeting to order at 6.02 p.m. Uh, on Wednesday, the 23rd of February. Uh, the first thing we will do, um, if I am following Brian's tremendous agenda here, uh, we need to uh, hear a motion on meeting minutes unless there are any conversations ahead of time. Move we approve the minutes. I'll second that. All those in favor, Fred? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Me, yes. Unanimous. Um, okay, vendor and payroll warrants. Anybody have a beef? No comments no. for me. Okay. I'm We're good. With that. Um, public comment. Is there any public comment that anyone would like to make that is not on, not on tonight's agenda before we move on? No? Okay. Um, uh, the next item on the agenda uh, is our public hearings. Um, we have guests with us tonight um, to discuss or to accept and, and discuss public comments to consider the transfer of the um, general on-premise on alcohol liquor license uh, from Waitley Investments LLC, uh, doing business as Club Castaways to HC Entertainment LLC at 226 State Road uh, in Waitley. What we are also going to do is simultaneously discuss um, public comments and consider the issuance of an entertainment license uh, for adult entertainment to HC Entertainment L LCC uh, at the same 226 State Road. The reason that we are not talking about the transfer of the entertainment license while we are all why we are talking about the transfer of the liquor license is that when um when the liquor when the entertainment license was granted back in 2018 18 brian or 19 finally i think it was 18 i would think it was 18 when it was uh, granted in 18 there was uh signed by all parties a non-transfer of the entertainment license so that's why 18. we would Need to issue a, a it's an issuance of the entertainment license as opposed to a transfer of the entertainment license just for clarity for those in attendance and the public watching so what i would like to do um is i i guess what i guess what what might make sense is to ask the uh proposed new owners to discuss their concepts around what they would do with that property. Um, you know, if you want to talk about marketing strategies, if you want to talk about, give us a sense of, of what you want to do so that we'll have a sense of what the foot traffic might be like, um, what, what your goals are, what your, you know, anything you want to share that would enlighten us on, on, on your plans. Jonathan, and, can I just- why you guys are, And why you guys are, are suited to, to own, um, own this business in Waitley, which is obviously a, a different business than we ordinarily have. Brian, you were going to say? Yeah, I just want to add, uh, um, let me just read the legal notice, but I also think probably the select board members should introduce themselves because it's not particularly obvious um, on mm -hmm. Zoom who the decision makers are. That's great. Um, so what do you want to do first? Um, I'll, I'll introduce myself and then we can go to, to, to Fred and Joyce. Uh, my name is Jonathan Edwards. I'm the chair of the select board. Um, oh, I just renamed myself so people can tell. My name is George Palmer Fortune. I am a member of the select board. And I'm Fred Barron, member of the select board. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate that. Um, you want to read the, the hearing yep. notice? Legal notice, Town of Waitley. Select board of the Town of Waitley will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, February 23rd, 2022 at 6 p.m. via Zoom. Meeting ID 829-5966-3649. <laughs> Pass code 546925 or join meeting by telephone. I can't believe I have to read this. 1 888 788 0099, US toll free. 1 877 853 5247, US toll free. For the purpose of accepting public comments on the proposed transfer of a liquor license and adult entertainment license to HC Entertainment LLC, the license premises is located at 226 State Road, Waitley, Mass. Oh, that's me. For more no, information, contact the select board. Jonathan Edwards, Chair, Select Board. Um, and do we just want to talk quickly about sort of the process, Jonathan? You're gonna you're gonna ask the the yeah. the um, yeah. the applicants to 
what we will do is, as I mentioned, the first step in this process will be to ask the applicants to discuss their 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 goals, um, why they why they feel they're they're well suited for this, um, and anything else that that they would like to share with us that would um, would help us make make decisions based upon the transfer of, of the liquor license and and the issuance potentially of, of a new entertainment license. Um, after that. Um, the select board will ask questions. Um, we will not at that point be accepting public comment yet. Um, we want to make sure that the select board, all three of us, have an opportunity to ask the questions that, that, that we feel are appropriate uh, and, and, and to get some answers that, that we may or may not be looking for, uh, depending upon who we are. Um, after that discussion is over, I know that didn't come out right, did it, Joyce? Um, <laughs> The grammar police are behind two closed doors. Exactly, so I, I hate that. that. Um, after that, uh, then we will, I will open it up for public comment. Uh, it'll be one at a time and people will be called upon um, to, to ask their questions or, or make their comments if they would like to. Mm -hmm. uh, at that point, and I'll re reiterate this at the time, um, the conversations that I am hoping exist will be questions from the public to the select board so that we avoid back and forth dialogue uh, at this point between the proposed owners, uh, attorney lesser, or um, the, 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 the public. I, I wanna keep this as organized as possible. The other thing that we'll be doing is I will, after the select board is done, or before the select board starts, and I'll look to Brian for his suggestion, um, I, I would like to have um, comments from Chief Savini. So uh, let, let's, you know, it, you may have quite comments, um, Jim, uh, ahead of time or questions ahead of time, but but why don't you prepare for some comments uh, after the select board and before the public comment period? Okay. okay. And if we keep it organized, it's just going to make the, the process uh, smoother. Um, and I will caution that um, we're going to avoid a four hour hearing on this, that it, there, there will be a, an, un, a yet to be determined time frame on this. Um, but if we're going around in circles, I, I will reserve the chair's right to, to stop discussion uh, or, or continue discussion to a future meeting is probably more appropriate. Are there any questions on that? Yes, Mr. Lesser. I was just gonna say, Jonathan, that just by way of introduction, when we were here in 1918, we had a number of hearings. I think it was before at least two of the three members were the same members of the board, perhaps all three. I can't quite recall. Oh, just two. That. Two, yeah. We had quite extensive hearings and you set forth a long list of conditions to operate. And the new owners are willing to abide by those conditions. So I just wanted to say that up front. Okay, I appreciate that. And and but let let's let's I I, I still like to, I really do appreciate that, um, Tom. And and when you know I'd like to still hear from the the proposed owners. Um, that being said, I I we 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 acknowledge under understanding those those conditions at this point. Uh, Absolutely, that was more for the public who might not have been around in two thousand and eighteen to say that there were. That you have your own, you have your own bylaws concerning adult entertainment, and there's a long list of conditions which would be attached to this license. But absolutely, you should you should hear from the applicants themselves in their own words. Great, thank you, and and I appreciate you you uh, you uh, amending the year that we originally met on this because you you had originally said 1918, which I thought, wow, <laughs> I have been doing this far too long. Uh, if if that was the case, so. Um, anyway, um, if you would, who's ever going to speak, if you could introduce your name and your... Uh, Jonathan, if I can first move to open the public hearing. Sure, Fred. I, I, you know, this is why people keep me in line in terms of <laughs> protocol, um, because my nickname was never Mr. Protocol. Um, uh, so I hear a motion. Second, all those in favor, Fred? Yes. Joyce? Aye. Yes, me. Okay. Now, um, for those who are speaking on behalf of the um, proposed new owner, uh, if you could introduce yourself and your name uh, and your responsibility or position. 
uh, with the with with the new initiative. So I'll open the floor. Whoever wants to talk, and I guess it's Alex. Yeah, Alex will work. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time, Brian and Jonathan, everybody who came today. Uh, so my name is Alexander. I would be the uh, the general manager uh, for the bar. It would the license would be under my name, and I additionally have Harrison Bonner on this phone call. Uh, he's working from our office right now. He is my general partner. Uh, we own a real estate uh, investment business as well as a construction business, and uh, we're 50-50 partners on everything. Um, I would re be responsible for the hiring, the marketing, the social media. I would be on site uh, actively manning, managing the club, um, and then Harrison would be responsible for the renovations. We have intentions to remodel the interior and the exterior of the venue, uh, make some alterations to the layout, uh, and overall just improve the uh, interior and exterior quality of the building. So Harrison, that would be Harrison's role. And uh, yeah, and then I also have on this, she called in, her name is Paula Andrea, and she would be our uh, head bartender. And I have her here. She would be working with me in unison to make sure that all of our uh, staff and servers are TIP certified. Uh, so they have proven intervention techniques uh, to prevent underage drinking and intoxication, as well as making sure that everybody is um, uh, serve safe, uh, has serve safe alcohol safety training, excuse me. And that would review, that would go over the rules and regulations of the state when it pertains to the sales and consumption of alcohol on the premise. So that's a uh, quick and dirty of who we are. If you'd like, I could take this time, Jonathan, to kind of share with you our background uh, and why we would like to move forward with this, with this project. Please do. Awesome. So Harrison and myself are both transplants from North and South Carolina. Uh, we're both, uh, I'm 31, he's 30. Uh, we moved here in 2014, 2015, and then we decided to go into business for ourselves in 2016, where we opened up um, a home remodeling sales company. So over the last four years or so, we, we worked on a lot of condominium projects, new construction and renovation projects uh, in and around Boston and Brockton. We would, we would purchase buildings that were heavily dilapidated, uh, renovate them, and then we would sell them. And then a little over two years ago, we made our way out to Western Massachusetts, where I spend a lot of my time currently. Um, we manage 85 apartments between Springfield and Holyoke. We've got a team of contractors, uh, journeymen, and tradesmen that work for us every single week. So uh, we've got a we've got a a lot of commitment and time out there, which is one of the reasons we think this venue makes sense for us. Uh, in addition to the 85 apartments that we manage, we're currently building and renovating uh, 45 more in the city of Holyoke. So, um, you know, from a background of building quality, clean products, we feel very sufficient that we can do that. Um, I've worked in the service industry for th three years as a server, uh, Harrison also worked in the service industry for two and a half years, and it's just been a dream of ours to eventually work our way into the nightclub business. Um, the sellers, Nick and Julius, happen to share a mutual friend of ours uh, based out of Chelsea. So when they were thinking about selling for their own individual reasons, uh, we got a phone call and we jumped all over it. And here we are. So we do have some concepts and thoughts and ideas that we can share with you, but uh, we look forward to taking notes from you guys today, um, you know, and hopefully alleviating concerns that you might have, but also being able to come back and prepare something a little bit more formal uh, for the next meeting. Thank you. I'm just, I, I have just a, a couple quick questions. Um, very, very nondescript questions. When you say here, um, in terms of relocating from the Carolinas, I, I know you talked about Boston and you talked about Western Massachusetts. Um, how close are you to Franklin County? So I'm about 90 minutes. I live in Quincy. Okay. Um, however, if this were to go through, 
uh, Harrison and myself have already discussed, it would make sense for us. Uh, we would realistically purchase a home in the area uh, because I personally would not want to make the drive back and forth every day. So we would become residents of the community, um, at least for the days that we are we are open. And we're currently discussing, uh, thinking a schedule, uh, maybe Wednesday through Saturday to be open um, from maybe one to one or four to one, since I would be heavily and actively managing the, 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 the venue for the first, you know, six months or so. Okay, thank you. And, and, and Paula, I don't want you to give away exactly where you live, obviously, but I would like to know, ballpark, are you anywhere near Franklin County? No, no, no. Uh, I don't mind giving it away. I actually live right here in front of the first public beach. Uh, but one of my intentions is to relocate um, maybe right around where, um, right in Whaley Mouse. Okay. Okay. Um, Fred and Joyce, do you have any comments or questions you would like to ask? Hmm. Want to go first? I, I've got one initial question. Your background is in real estate and flipping and, and then managing apartment building. What, aside from a lifelong desire, what made you want to go into now managing a bar, you know, entertainment facility? It's there, or do you intend to buy the property and flip it? So we do not intend to purchase this building and flip it. Uh, anybody who has known me uh, growing up knows how much I love uh, the nightlife. If I were to travel to a new city, I would much rather explore the city through the nightlife than uh, during the day. It's just, it's just part of my personality. Um, so I've always been really drawn to nightclubs, lounges, hookah bars, entertainment venues. Uh, I, I just think they're fun. I love the energy. Uh, I love the escape they create for people. Um, so while I have never actively managed uh, a bar per se, um, I have managed a lot of people. Um, you know, I personally have built my own uh, management team for all of our rentals. So I'm highly involved with all of our tenants and the tradesmen that manage the repairs, as well as our administrative assistants that help with uh, lease ups, housing vouchers, fuel assistance. So while it is a slightly different venue, uh, I, I tend to find myself as a people person. Uh, and I think that I will be able to manage people in this establishment very well, especially considering I'm passionate about the nightlife industry. Now, just in, in general, lots of people who are passionate about either food or nightlife or whatever have gotten into restaurants and bars and failed miserably if they don't have any experience. Sure. And Do you have anyone with any managed bar uh, entertainment management experience on your team? That's a, oh. that's, a, that's, a great, that's a great question. So Paula, who's on the phone call, her family has three restaurants and bars. Uh, so she has actively worked in restaurants and bars in East Boston for the last 10 years. So she's, um, she's highly versatile in that space. Um, and then We've also found a, uh, a consultant who's now kind of turned into a mentor and Fred, a friend, excuse me, his name is Peter DePena, and he owns uh, three nightclubs on the eastern side of the state, one of them being uh, relatively large and very popular, uh, the Squire in Revere. So Peter DePena will be a consultant on this project as we go through remodeling for highest and best use, as well as training and the first you know, couple months as we take off and, uh, and launch this business. So we, we have built a team uh, that we can lean on uh, to fill in the blanks, if you will, for the questions we don't know answers to. I can just step in for a second, um, Mr. Barron, just, just to highlight to everybody on this call, this was, um, I would call it serendipity. Uh, it was a sweet coincidence. So. Uh, Nick, who was uh, one of the sellers, I went to high school with him. And the person who is uh, the broker doing the transaction actually introduced us. And um, like Alexander says, 
I have actually been working with my family for the past 15 years, and uh, we are now on the third venue, and they, they manage it well. I've been wanting to move to Western Mass um, because, like he says, we have a lot of projects there. And not that it has anything to do with the whole conversation, but it, I call it serendipity because when I met Alexander, I said, when we get engaged, I'm going to buy you a strip club. And that's why it's just a sweet coincidence. The person that introduces is the person that is a broker to this. And I understand why Mr. Barron says that not everybody that likes the industry can manage it, but we've, we have a lot of, ex I have a lot of experience in the industry and we plan to, even though we do have the apartment buildings and we love what we do there, um, our, our intention is always to keep providing employment and generating employment. Um, one of the reasons why I want to be head bartender is because I want to get to know people in the community. And um, throughout COVID and after COVID, there's been a lot of opportunities that have arisen for um, independent small businesses. So if, if in any way, even though we're young, we can be a bridge or a way to help the community while we're there, we have every intention to be a part of the community, not just, like you said, go in there, buy the property and flip it. Oh, no, we want to be there and most likely buy a property very close by to where the the uh, bar is and just keep growing in that area in Western Massachusetts. We believe in in that area and we love that um, there's a lot of potential and we just want to live there and be part of the community. If Paul is the one with the experience, why isn't she the, the manager? The manager, well, I figured Alex is also going to be there with me and it is his property. Why not him be the manager on duty? I mean, I'm, I'm obviously going to be there, you know, hands on also, but it, it was ran for 45 years by a couple, by a partnership. I believe that we can both put in, you know, if, if I needed to be the manager on duty, I, I have no problem with putting myself on the list as the manager on duty. I just figured it's his club. Why not have him be the manager on duty? Yours, I, yeah. Thank you. That's good power. Yeah. I don't have anything else right now. Joyce? Um, yeah, I sort of have a couple of things rolling around in my head. They might seem disconnected um but um uh paula mentioned um experience in the industry that's really the restaurant industry where alcohol is served so that's really pertinent to the alcohol license um i i suspect if you had experience in the adult entertainment industry that you would have already said something about that. Is that, am I reading too much into it or? No, I don't. I don't, but that's okay. the reason why I relied on somebody like Peter. Peter has been working. Um, Peter, so the, Peter, Peter who? De, Peter DePisa is um, the person who, okay. yes, he actually has three different clubs. Um, one of them being right in the city where I live. It's Revere. Um, and I've been training a lot with him. I'm actually, after this meeting, getting ready to head out um, and help him with inventory today and learning more about it. I'm actually his apprentice right now because yes, I understand that even though you have um, experience in the alcohol, which is my biggest and main concern, um, I don't have any experience in the entertainment industry, but that, that is something that I'm learning right now. And it's something that the rules, the regulations, everything that pertains to it is something that I, I've done a, a lot of research and development in different clubs throughout the whole state. We've even gone to New Hampshire. We've gone down to um, Rhode Island. I've gone all the way to Miami um, with people that actually have ran these places um, for years because I want to learn, you know, every little detail. And I feel as a woman, I'm, I'm in a very well position to like, um, to open up this place in a community like this and know that I'm going to have a very safe environment for the girls that come in, um, that we have people like um, Alexander that we've talked about this fact that if we have girls that are coming into the industry and that's not where they belong, we can mentor them to do other things. Like I said, we do real estate, we do, we're planning um, to keep growing. So if, if, if 
if this is this is something that we want to do because we know we're capable of doing it because we've seen how they they work how they're managed like i said the squire is probably four times the size and i feel capable of running that place if i had to um i'm still in training i'm learning from um the gentleman who's owned it for mo all his life he's known it he actually um bought it from his family members so he's he's always and he has three different different establishments that run very well within um within our area so i feel that i'm in the right hands alexander did not mention this but um we do have a gentleman from the boston police department who's a close friend of my family or or, or a close friend of mine who does a, a training um for different club owners around the area and this is a program that he started um about a year or a year and a half ago and he's willing to train the staff um at the club also um not only uh with physical training but de-escalation and um just basic training of of how to prevent things that happen in, in places like this we we never this place has been ran for 45 years on a clean record and we don't plan to to change anything on it just keep keep it as it was before it got closed down for COVID. Mm, okay. And then um, Alex and Harrison, do you have any experience running a business that has an alcohol license? We've never ran a, we've never run anything with an alcohol license before. Um, we both okay. have, yep. Okay. Yeah. That, that That's, that's kind of what I was, um, asking about um uh are you willing to say um like any of the apartments you manage in springfield and holyoke like, like tell me like about uh like one of them that you're particularly proud of perhaps or um anything like is i mean is that something you're willing to um, let me know sure absolutely sure. I will share. Um, I will share my hardest project that I've ever that I've ever managed before. Um, we own two eight-unit apartment buildings in Springfield on High Street, ninety and ninety-two High Street. Harrison and myself have uh, worked in challenging neighborhoods ever since we got started. They and that's in, in Holyoke or in Springfield. That's in Springfield. In Springfield. That's in what Springfield. What neighborhood is that, Alex? It's ninety and ninety-two High Street. It's a uh, I guess it's approximately four blocks back from the casino. Mm -hmm. So it's in the South end. Yeah. Okay. So when we visited the property, um, you know, we, we thought it was a distressed area, maybe just kind of poor. I had absolutely zero idea on how rough and dangerous the neighborhood was. Um, I ended up talking to the head of narcotics uh, within the first week of owning it because of, the open rifles, ammunition, bulletproof vests, mm. guns full, chests full of guns in the backyard, uh, and prostitution happening in my building, much less the, uh, the gangs that would control the deadbolts on the insides of the doors and control who could come in and out of the, um, the building. If you're familiar with the movie New Jack City, I purchased, it's a great movie. It's worth a watch. I purchased New Jack City. Um, and over the next nine months, um, I battled and leaned on my uh, local officials, my the police department, the narcotics department, the mayor. Uh, I worked with, I got very involved with the people that were in the neighborhood running their drugs, trying to work around them and not essentially get killed while I worked there as I had to move their business. And I essentially moved uh, approximately $2.2 .2 million worth of $20 transactions out of my front yard and building. Now there's somewhere else in Springfield, but I've created a safe environment that's very well lit and secure. Uh, and it's something that I did that the head of narcotics said we weren't able to do in 25 years. And that street is performing and is safer than it's been for the last 25 years. So that is, you know, I feel like if I can 
get through those types of vandalism calls and that type of very terrifying and strenuous work environment, I can manage some people and make sure we don't overserve them. Okay, well, that's good to know. Um, so I, um, I wrote down this um, note here that um, I think it was Alex who said, you were in the service industry for 2.5 years. And I didn't quite see that on the, like I think I saw the Corey application. Um, it just mentioned painters and real estate. So can you tell me a little bit more about um, what you meant by being in the service industry for uh, two and a half years? Sure. So Harrison, I'll go first and then I'll let, I'll let you follow up with your experience after that. Okay. Uh, so from the time I was 18 um, till 20, just under 22, for about three and a half years or so, uh, I worked at a sports bar in Columbia, South Carolina, where I grew up. Um, so on average, I would do approximately $900 to $1,300 in sales per my shift. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, we had- As a know, bartender, do you say? Uh, as a server, as a, a server. server. Okay. Yep, as a server. So, um, okay. You know, but with that, I mean, that's, okay. that's service. I just, I, 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 the service industry is kind of vague and I just was wondering what, it, what you really meant. Sure. Yeah. That's it. And my experience as well is relatively similar, um, in college started at a barbecue restaurant, worked my way up, way up to uh, French style, uh, fine dining, um, mm -hmm. like a three, three, four year period or so. So. Okay, and that's as a server as well? Uh, that's correct, server and uh, did some food running, so a little bit of front and back of house. Okay, okay. Hey, Joyce, can I, can I? Why don't you go ahead, John? I'm yeah. still looking over my notes. Okay, okay, great. Um, have any of these establishments, and I'm, I'm guessing not so much with, with Harrison and, and Alex's experience as, as, as servers, um, but more with uh, Paula's uh, experience, have, have security details been a regular part of, of the um, systems for, for, for the nightly operations? <clears throat> well, um, the first establishment that my family owned was six, no, not even th three minutes from the Boston Police Department, District 7, right, we're right in East Boston, which is probably five minutes away from the Logan Airport. Um, and there were many establishments around. So because we started with a billiards hall that I petitioned to get um, a beer, wine and cordials license uh, for, um, we didn't have detailed police that was, it wasn't necessary. Now, um, after a while and after the license came in and it became a little bit more busy, I, we hired security to be there, but we never had detailed police. I do understand in Whaley why it was, um, a, a good option to have detailed police just because it's a lot more quiet where we were, it's right in the city so there's so many um establishments around and the and the police presence is very constant so we never needed a detailed police and hire, because of the size of the establishment too we're under 49 just did you hire bouncers or people well we did um like i said this is a family establishment so we did have um I would say six years ago, we started hiring bouncers because of um, the change in license. It went from being a billiards hall to a nightclub. So now we do have them. But before that, um, we would just, we had um, after nine o'clock, one of the staff would be at the door just so we, for ID purposes. So people wouldn't come in and out without knowing. And because no one can come into the establishment with any alcoholic beverages and they can't leave with any alcoholic beverages. So we just wanted to control the door. That was the main reason to have somebody out front. I just want to clarify that it wasn't for security purposes. It was just for control of knowing who was coming in and out and what they were bringing in and out. And if, if I may add something, um, Jonathan, something that 
So she had brief, Paula had briefly mentioned this earlier. Um, Sean Mirando, who is a family friend of Paula and her restaurants, um, he has a security company and he's been hired by Big Night Entertainment. Big Night Entertainment is a, um, a nightclub venue and they've, uh, excuse me, a group and they own 17 venues. Um, so Sean has been hired to train all of the uh, security staff between those 17 venues. Uh, and he, we would plan on having security at the venue, uh, absolutely. And we would 100% have everybody go through um, a training program with Sean um, for de-escalation, but also just safely resolving situations as they arise, if they arise. That's just for clarification the name, please. I'm sorry, could you repeat the name before you go on? Um, it was Sean, what was his name? Sean Mirando. It's M-I-R-A-N-D-O. And I also want to clarify, he does not have a security company. He has, um, he's a martial, he's trained in martial arts and created his own program, which is registered um, worldwide. And he is currently training, um, it's the Big Night Live Entertainment Group, um, but he's training one of the biggest nightclubs or the staff of one of the biggest nightclubs. I just wanted to clarify, he does not have a security company. He's an active Boston police officer. Anyway, that would be okay. a conflict of interest. He just, he trains, um, he's actively training different personnel for the biggest um, nightclubs here in Boston. Okay, so earlier when um, he mentioned uh, Boston Police Department, I've got a little note, uh, training for club owners uh, and willing to, to train staff on prevention and de-escalation. That is the same person you're talking about now. Yes, yes. His oh, name is okay. Sean Moran. And, and that's the Boston PD. Okay. Yes, he's Boston Police Department in active. He's an active officer. And he's of an active system. officer. So he doesn't have a separate company. This is something he does as a part of his job. This or is something he started a cup. Um, so he has been doing martial arts before he even joined the force. He started as a okay. security. And because of that, join the force. Um, he's been doing martial arts all his life and created a new program. Um, uh -huh. He's actually even gone abroad to France to train different people. So this is something that he's actively doing. We could invite him to the next hearing so you can hear it from um, him what it is that his training brings. But it just brings great de-escalation methods to prevent and to teach people who are in, in, at the front door, who are um, running on these kinds of establishments to de-escalate the problem. And just like, as we know, we're serving liquor. So um, there are ways and there are things that you can keep an eye on and prevent it to, mm -hmm. to, yeah. to prevent problems that could come up. So we just, we wanna squish it from the bottom and make sure that everybody's oh, okay. trained in every aspect. Okay, and, and just to follow up on that, what is his relationship to the Big Night Entertainment Group? Well, he, no, he is, um, I just use him as an example because it's one of the first clubs that he started training. So, um, oh, okay, so they are a client. And also like, okay. yes, it's different. Yeah. Um, did, did we lose her? I think we might've lost her there. It sounds like he's an independent contractor. Right, right. And and, yeah, and it sounds like he did the training um, for the uh, the Big Night Entertainment Group. Yes, I apologize if I misspoke, if he's hired as an yeah. independent contractor, but um, yes. Oh, okay. No, I, well, I, I, I also don't always know when I'm writing my notes, and did, did I catch everything? So some of the times when I'm asking questions, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I, I, what I noted down is actually accurate. So, because that's kind of the thing I'll rely on when we're doing our deliberations. Sure. Um, but I, I bet we'll get uh, Paola back <laughs> soon. Um, if, uh, you know, knock on wood, the internet, internet uh, well, uh, somehow well, helping us out here. Hey, Joyce, let me, let me, let me break in while she, while we're waiting for, for her to return. Um, you guys mentioned you were going to do some extensive renovations. Do you have a time? If, if, let's assume, um, do a, a hypothetical approval um, from the from the date of sale and and approval. 
what does your opening schedule look like? Uh, so realistically, from the time the building permits would be issued, uh, we're looking at uh, probably a 45 to 60 day remodel. Um, and then we would be able to do some soft training for a week or so uh, before and then and then launch after that. We're not entirely sure how long this process will take, but we were kind of ballparking somewhere in the summer to maybe early fall. Okay. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure you guys have done your due diligence in terms of the, the and I know you've agreed to, to things before, the, the renovations, we, we worked very closely with neighbors and the, the now current owners um, to make sure that there was a, a safety, privacy, whatever kind of separation um, was, you want to call it, was created between employee and potential uh, guests of, of the establishment. And I'm, and I'm assuming that you, you guys would share those plans with us so that we made sure that that separation for, for safety and privacy and just a little downtime for employees away from the customers uh, would, be, would be preserved. Of course, and we don't have any um, intentions, at least as of now, to expand the footprint of the building. Um, we just want to restructure some of the interior layout um, to, to better optimize it. We feel it has some uh, slightly wasted space at the moment. And then we were planning on, uh, and we're, we're open for ideas, nothing, nothing, none of this is set in stone, uh, but then also doing a facade renovation um, just to clean up the exterior of the building, but we weren't planning on expanding and we would of course share everything and keep the, the, the privacy wall. Okay. Thank you. And, and a cautionary note that, um, expansion of the footprint, uh, if, if this all goes through, will be a very tall order as my guest. Just, I've been around for a long time. Uh, that's, be very... that would be a tough, that'd be a, a, a tough one. Yeah, that would be tough. I mean, it's small, it's, as you, as you know, it's a pretty small area. Mm -hmm. and you're, you're right up against a pretty, pretty, pretty busy uh, state road already. So, um, Paula, anyway, thank you for returning. Um, yeah, welcome back, Paula. Um, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name. I, I, I think Alex says pa Paolo, but uh, you know, I apologize. What other questions do, do, do you guys have, if any, before we turn it over I, to uh, the public? I, I've got going back to the question on experience. I'm hearing a lot about running from Paula family restaurant with a liquor license in East Boston, but not a lot about running an adult, you know, the problems of running an adult entertainment facility, which is very different from a, res a family restaurant in East Boston that serves liquor. If, if um, I'm, oh, sorry. And uh, what I'd like to do, I would love to hear from your, at our next meeting from your consultant, Pete, to who's apparently your consultant on the entertainment business as to what kind of training, uh, you know, hiring practices, whatever you will be undergoing because running an adult entertainment facility in Waitley is very different from running a bar, a, a, a standard bar. Sure, we will absolutely have Pete on the next one and we'll put together a narrative and we'll share it with you guys a week or two before so you guys can review it um and then if you have any questions or concerns we can adjust the plan before we formally present absolutely and as paula indicated she has been training most recently in nightclubs that do have this sort of entertainment and she is familiar with it and just before we turn it over to the public, we're, we're here to have a license issued under General Laws Chapter 40, Section 183A. And some, I know Jonathan and Joyce are familiar with that statute, and the public may not be. But it says the licensing authority shall, and the word shall is used in the statute, grant a license unless they find the license would adversely affect the public health, safety, or order, and that the concert, dance, exhibit, exit, 
exhibition, cabaret, or public show cannot be conducted in a manner so as to protect employees, patrons, and members of the public inside or outside of the premises from disruptive conduct, from criminal activity, or from health, safety, or fire hazards. That was A, and B is prevent an unreasonable increase in the level of noise in the area caused by the license activity or caused by patrons entering or leaving the premises, or C, prevent an unreasonable increase in the level of pedestrian or vehicular traffic. I think clearly B and C are not going to change. The footprint isn't changing. The capacity isn't changing. We're talking about whether or not there is some set of conditions which would allow this activity to be prevented without adversely affecting the public health, safety, or order. I mean, these licenses are First Amendment protected. That's why there is very little, relatively little discretion in the board. The board should certainly make sure that the, it is, the license is used in a way that would not adversely affect the public health, safety, or order. And that employees, patrons, and members of the public are protected from disruptive conduct from criminal activity or from health, safety, or fire hazards. But I think that's what's being set up in this application and the training that people are gonna go through will ensure that will occur. And, and that is absolutely true. My questioning is simply to ensure for the community that this ownership group has the experience or is getting the education necessary to run such a facility in a safe, healthy manner. Uh, agreed upon. And I think that although they don't have the experience, they are going to be getting the training and their employees will get the training, which will have that. Which well, have that's, that. What, that's what I'm looking to ensure, you know, to, to protect the community against uh, inexperienced or incompetent, and I'm not saying that they are, but from inappropriate ownership. Mr. Barron, I- that just doesn't know what they're doing. Right. I am. Right. And then that's why we're asking the questions we ask. It's our right. job to ask these kind of questions. And we're not saying we assume that, that you have no, we just want to know more about your experience and you're, you're very graciously answering our questions. Yeah. Yes. Paula, you were saying? No, I, I completely understand um, his concern. I actually, I wanted to compare it to 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 something, to maybe, um, let's not take it to driving, because if you see, let's say a taxi, sometimes will drive worse than a new driver that will be more precautious. But let's take it to the medical field. When you're in the medical field, sometimes the residents are more, taken more into consideration the one side and the other because they're new to this. So I would like you to see us on that perspective. Even though we're young, we are on my behalf, abiding by the rules and regulations is my main concern, making sure that I follow them, making sure that I'm not causing a bad uh, change in the community. So like I, under, I completely understand where you come from and that's why I took it upon myself to go and train in, in a new place that I, you know, I could be still doing full-time real estate right now, but I took a little pause because I'm training myself very well for this. Even though this establishment is relatively more smaller, it's even better because it becomes more of, I want it to be a community place, even though the adult entertainment part scares a lot of people because of the taboo behind it. I want it to be a community place. And that's why I took it upon myself to go training. Um, and today is my official day on the job. Um, so I hope to bring uh, Peter into the next meeting and have him talk to you to see. And I'm pretty sure I've learned a lot in the next meeting. I've, I have learned, I have had learned a lot about that side, which I know concerns um, everybody a lot, but I, am, I have a lot of experience. Um, more than 15 years of experience, I would say, um, in the alcohol license industry. And I think that's also a very important factor because um, sometimes it's cause and effect. And if you prevent 
the cause, you won't have an effect. Okay. Um, since it sounds like we're going to have a subsequent hearing, um, and unless Fred or Joyce want to ask a question at, at this snapshot in time, what I'd like to do in the in the to, to respect everyone's schedule is to open this up to Jim, and then open it up to public questions and comment for a, a period of time. Does that are, are Fred and Joyce okay with that at this point? I'm fine with that. Yeah, I I I think that's fine. I I do think um, the security plan and things like that, the, those kind of details are still kind of things we want to ask about. But I think we can open it up, like you said, and come back to that later. Yeah, absolutely. Because I I look forward to hearing the hearing from the the um, the security consultant. Um, I also you know I'll, I'll I'll preface my my curiosity, having lived in Boston, having lived in big cities like. Washington, um, having worked in Springfield, there's a big difference between those cities and a 1500 person rural town. Um, and, and so I, 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 I am eager to hear at a later date, um, how an understanding of the small rural community might factor into how you guys operate the business. Uh, but again, we can talk about that the next time you guys come to visit. Um, Jim, you want to say a couple words? Um, sure. I, I don't really have much to say. Um, I think the concerns, obviously, from my perspective, are, are more the security side of things. Um, I don't know that that's a discussion. We, we haven't made a habit of discussing those things in public in the past um, with this business and other businesses as well. Um, we usually have meetings, we discuss it, um, we get approvals, and then we <clears throat> kind of make, make that as part of the overall plan. Um, that's that's reviewed by me and then you know getting my my approval to the board um, so as far as the security stuff i haven't been presented with anything um, we had a brief conversation um, but we haven't met in at the location to discuss any camera angles you know all the little nuances and details so um, that's a conversation that i would look forward to having um, the other concern would be a traffic concern. Um, I think we've established that with the last owners um, kind of setting up, which it sounds like they're going to kind of follow the same path, but uh, setting up restricting parking areas. So we have side light of, um, sorry, line of sight um, looking north on 5 and 10 coming from Christian Lane. So there's no issues there. Um, the upkeep in the parking lot as far as, you know, just grooming it, making sure the grass doesn't get too high and snow banks don't, don't get too high. Those are the only other concerns that I would that I would have, uh, unless um, any of the, the three of you have questions specifically for me. Um, that's that's really the concerns that I have. I, I guess my only um, request would be that the team. Uh, take, take into consideration the possibility of introducing Sean to Chief Savini so that they can have a conversation uh, about security just in terms of the Chief's expectations so that we get ahead of that uh, if this were to go forward and so that um, the, the Chief can, as appropriate, uh, without, you know, he's our, he's our expert in security. So that it, when we do have a, a subsequent hearing or continuation of the hearing, he can talk about um, his comfort level with with the the consultant's uh, expertise, skill level, uh, etc. So I I would make that request that that introduction is made and that conversation happens prior to the next um, hearing or the continuation of the hearing. Absolutely, we should we should get together with, with chief with the chief and and discuss that with him. I, I would note that a condition of the last license was a coordination with the Waverly Police Department in development of a formal security plan, which would be submitted to the chief and the chief would have to approve it and approval will be given no later than 30 days after the issuance of the license. And you set forth the actual things that had to be considered, but I agree it'd be helpful to begin that discussion in earnest before the next meeting. Thank you. Okay, I will then open it up for, um, 
for questions um, or comments. What I'm going to try to do, I have my list of participants here. I'm hoping that, and, and I see one person already knows how to use the raise hand function. Um, but if you would like to ask a question or make a comment, I ask you that you um, you use that function so that that we can be that we can be organized and and, and efficient. Um, so um, there, I, I have I have Susan Barron who I saw the hand first. So go ahead, Susan. Thank you. I have two questions for the select board that are related. One is at the opening of the meeting, Mr. Lesser said that the new owners agree to all of the terms um, that were set out by the select board a couple of years ago in order to reopen the establishment. I don't know if uh, for the public record, we need to hear that from the potential owners. And I'm wondering if for the record, it would help to hear what those terms are so people know what is being agreed to. And the second part of my question relates to that list, which is for the current owners agreed to those terms and the select board was very generous in allowing them to open while things supposedly were underway. And my understanding is not everything was, was ever done. And I'm hoping the select board at this point will, have, will put down a hard line of not allowing the facility to open until everything on that list can be ticked off. And actually a, a minor thing, I'm really disappointed by the current owners how since the club has been closed for two years, they have completely neglected the facility and it's become an eyesore in town. And just investing in a weed whacker would have made a difference in terms of making our community look better. And I'm hoping that the select board will consider terms that require that the building be maintained to a certain standard. So I guess that's three, three things for the select board. Sorry, I can't count. Okay. Um, uh, where to start? I, I, I'm not, what I'd like to suggest, um, because I know that those, those covenants, for lack of a better term, are, are quite lengthy. Um, I would suggest that perhaps we post those on the website for people to take a look at and come prepared with specific questions about um, individual line items of those terms. Uh, to the next, to, to the continuation of the hearing, rather than having um, Mr. Lesser read them. Um, and, and, but Susan, I also want to be uh, understanding that, that you want this information. So if you're comfortable with that approach, uh, that would be great. Um, Brian, is that an easy thing to do is to put is to post that um, on the website in a place that people can easily find it as opposed to a place where people have to look around? Okay, and if anyone does not have access to the web, I am quite certain that if they called ahead, um, the staff at town at town offices could easily um, print a hard copy to be picked up uh, for people to read it, and then they can come prepared for the continuation of, of this hearing. Um, let, let me just finish the the, the 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 comments that I wanted to make for Susan. Um, I am. I will fall on my sword and say I am not familiar with what steps were take were not taken or not completed before we allowed and, and maybe I was aware then but four years later I just don't recall. Susan, um, I am curious what those were so that we don't make that same mistake or we understand why why the um, why the allowance was 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 permitted uh, initially. Uh, again, but I, I just have, I have no idea. I was pretty busy that year. Um, oh, so I, oh, Jonathan, I, <laughs> I remember well enough that okay. there were, there were basically just physical things they did not do. And we said, Hey, you didn't do this. You ought to be shut down. And they'd come and they'd cry and like, Oh, we can't do it. Uh, and then you and the other selectmen were very accommodating. I was not in favor of being accommodating, but they were very accommodating. Said, "We'll give you an extension. We'll give you an extension on your homework," and they gave another extension. And then finally, one of us, well, well, more two, more like two of us, put our foot down and said, 
look, you are going to be shut down okay. now until you get that done. And they got it done within a week, but they That's took it. three months of crying and whining about, I want an extension on my homework, right? And, and they just they, they just didn't want to do it. And they were trying to see how far they could push us. Okay. Okay. That's yeah, how I, I remember it. I might be, I, I might see it through a particular color lens, but that's, that's, I think what Susan is referring to. Okay. And, um, and, and I apologize for not remembering it. I, I just, it, it just wasn't, you know, okay. um, and then finally the, the upkeep to what, to the extent that I, I wish that we could do that to, to a lot of properties in Whitley that I don't believe are, 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 are kept to, to the standards that I would like them to, to be kept. Um, and if we can do something with that uh, or work with mm -hmm. um, with the new owners, I I am all in favor of that. Um, next question to and again I um, yeah go ahead ma'am. Oh, go ahead. Can, can you hear me? Yes. This is uh, Margaret Ryan, and I and my brother own two forty two State Road, which is a small farm abutting this establishment. And I'm grateful for the uh, invite to the Zoom meeting because we've been excluded all these years, never knew what was going on. Um, so, you know, we've known the former owners, like that club's been there since 1974. My brother's been on the property, he's now deceased. You know, like we've owned it for 30 years. And, um, you know, I'm just really skeptical of this new group, uh, you know, coming from, you know, and also the old group, they, met, they all opened on Friday the 13th and was shut down by COVID two days later. You know, we've had, you know, numerous problems over the years. You know, my brother's deceased, but, you know, he knew the former owners. We had like plant thefts. We had, you know, people parking in our property, people trespassing in our, our uh, back field, which is accessible by like a, a path goes past the solar field. And, you know, it was never a big deal. It's always been there forever. Um, and my brother knew the owner and would just, instead of calling the Waitley police and reporting it, he would say, you know, this is going on, that's going on. It was always resolved. Um, when, um, the, when Jimmy retired, uh, my, my brother's friend who ran the farm stand, uh, when she heard it was going to be a strip club again, she didn't feel safe and she gave up the business and then COVID hit. So we're trying to reopen the flower business. Um, but, you know, we still have these problems, like, you know, we, we actually pay for the streetlight above our farm um, for security. But, you know, when, if this place reopens, I'm just really scared with new owners who have, like, not that much experience, especially in the entertainment industry. And I have a brother who's worked in clubs in Boston for 60 years. And, you know, I just am very skeptical that they can make a go of it. Um, originally, uh, you know, uh, the the people that bought the place from Jim were like, oh, we're going to turn it into a nice restaurant, this and that, you know, but that never happened. But I just am very skeptical that this is going to be the right fit for Waitley. Um, I, I know a lot of people like this place and are old farmers and like to go there. They're nostalgic about it, but, you know, it just can't expand any further. And, you know, I'm going to have my, my kids living up there going to grad school in, in uh, UMass. And, you know, I've, stay there by myself and have people pull over and like ask about the places. You know, I, I just have security questions and I just don't think they have the experience in running the entertainment business and the bar and the whole thing. You know, it's, it's a to totally different scene than Wheatley. So, you know, that's my two cents. I have a lot of concerns. And I, and I would encourage um, when we have, as you probably heard, they're gonna have their security consultant uh, attend the next uh, hearing or the continuation of this hearing whenever that mm -hmm. happens. Um, and I would encourage you to uh, come prepared to ask questions of, of, of that individual in terms of how he is suggesting that they be trained to address your concerns because those oh, are you bet you bet very, I mean very 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 valid concerns. Yeah I mean it's a beautiful community it's like 1200 people it's a farming community. This is kind of like a throwback business. I mean, it would be great if it was a, like a nice restaurant, you know, and I'm concerned also, I heard that they don't want to pay the the, uh, the workers, but most of the people in the entertainment industry, I mean, usually they pay the club owner 
to to perform there and then they get the tips but you know i've heard that they, they want to make it like a union thing and all this sort of thing and that's never going to work that's never going to work okay. so. um paula you have your hand do you had your hand up i don't know if you still do well um, i i didn't catch miss margaret's last name i just wanted to highlight that um yes i know that experience is a big concern for everyone but um even in the entertainment, I want to highlight that my families don't just have restaurants, they also have nightclubs. So, and it's, uh, it started out as one thing and it became now that. I understand your concern. Um, I do want to highlight that earlier in this meeting, Alex was talking about a property um, that's in Springfield. And I wanted to highlight that he actually paid um, for a camera that's not located on his property, but that the police, Springfield Police Department have direct access to. And I want to mention that because um, part of our plan is putting strategic cameras all around the property. I know exactly what pathway, um, if it's on the back of the property, that must be the path that goes to your property. And with that being said, we can share that camera and it can have a sensor. So if anybody were to ever just even uh, a, a sensor, the light will, a, a big light will shock on them and like, you know what I mean? Like there are yeah, a but, lot of ways that we can do to make sure that we have safety. Let, let her, Excuse let her me, finish. that's Love just it. not Waitley. That's not Waitley. It's a farming community. I mean, I would be offended if any of my neighbors put up a camera. I mean, I it's don't know. Not, no, no, no. I'm saying around the property, there is going to be surveillance. There are going to be cameras. Now I was offering, or I was suggesting that if you wanted a camera that points towards your direction, that way, if anybody were to like, even go that way, which is not an area where they, it's not fenced out, but it's not an area where any of the patrons should be going to, then it would automatically set up a light that flashes on that. I'm just giving you, um, there's different ways that we can prevent from people going to your property, but I don't see that being a problem because we're not looking to to bring in people from everywhere. We're okay with the with it being a small space and having the people that are there from the community, the guys that want to come from the Yankee Channel, just locals. We're not planning to to have a uh, you know uh, Amherst come over and do a party there. It's uh, our plan is to keep it small and neighborhood and just like it's always been for the past 45 years. Okay, other questions? Uh, yes, uh, Fred Orlowski, can you hear me? I can, Fred, go ahead. Uh, just for a minute, for, start off with, uh, okay, I'm a resident of Waitley, live on Christian Lane. I was one of the board members, uh, Mr. Lesser, uh, one of the three before when we approved this. So if you're wondering who the third member was, I'm no longer on the board, but still a resident of town. Uh, and I know we went through a lot of a lot of conditions, a lot of meetings, like Joyce was saying, and and the the owners, the existing owners, uh, met all the conditions. Maybe it wasn't as timely as we all wanted, but. Uh, they met all the conditions that we asked them to do before they would open. Uh, we placed several conditions on the security. We finally agreed on what a comfortable security plan would be, both for them and us. Uh, and and I think the 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 owners at that time had no experience in running a a bar or nightclub either. They had a restaurant in Boston and convinced the board that they could manage a restaurant, a, a bar and facility like this in Whateley. Uh, again, they had no experience in Whateley or probably in, in Western Massachusetts. Uh, the conditions that we placed on, on the, the new owners, there was quite a few of them. I think it would be more important rather than posting that on a website, that's the existing or old owners. I think it would be more important to see the conditions for the new owners. Are they gonna follow the same conditions? Maybe some of them are not appropriate anymore or need to be more conditions added to that. I think to go back and say whether the prior owner met all the conditions, I don't know how that's directly related to the new owner because they're, they're gonna manage it differently. Uh, probably with different people, so. Uh, and finally, the last thing, 
you know, one of our concerns was, was traffic. How much increased business was going to be there? How much traffic was going to be generated on Christian Lane, that intersection? Well, uh, living again on Christian Lane, the times I've been through there, when that business was open, there was never a full parking lot after it was open. And there was even one or two special events that we were afraid the traffic was going to going to uh, go back on Christian Lane, go into our town office space, park on, on State Road. That never happened. Uh, I think the owners were very aware of that, concerned of that, and, and they managed to run a business that wouldn't disrupt the community and disrupt the traffic going through that intersection. Traffic goes through at night for Yankee Candles down the road. They go through at night with changing in shifts. They didn't want to disrupt that. Okay, that, that's uh, all the so, comments I have for now. Okay, I just want to, and, and I'm just going to comment on one of them, Fred. The purpose of the website is for historical understanding by residents. Um, if you prefer, we can read them one by one right now. Um, but it was for historical um, reference, and I think it's important for people to understand what those covenants are, and also to understand the timing on the adherence to those covenants by the former owners. Again, if you ignore history, you're going to repeat it, and we're not going to re, uh, ignore history here. Yeah, so, not to mention the public record. Well, I'm sorry, to, it, Joyce? It is in the public record. It is right. publicly available information. We should make it easy to find. Okay. But, right. My, my goal is just to make it more easily accessible. That's all. If you want um, it. If you want to do that, fine, but but I think you need some, I don't know, caveat or some condition that these uh, may be changed with the new owners or and and, and that's and that's entirely possible. It's, it's and, right. and that goes without saying. Okay. So um, I don't see any other questions. Um, Brian, how do we schedule a subsequent or a continuation of this of this hearing? Um so uh, to answer your question directly, you would continue the public hearing to a date, time, and place certain. And I think also maybe before you do that, we should set expectations about who or what information the board wants to uh, receive in the meantime, and also what you would like at the next, at, at the continuation of the public hearing, so that everybody's on the same page now. Um, well, I had mentioned that I, I, I would like the conversation to take place between the, the security consultant uh, and, and Chief Savini. Um, I, would, um, I, I would like to hear their perspectives on the differences between some of whom, which are primary cities, a, a place like Boston, secondary cities, uh, cities, cities, or, or even tertiary cities. There are differences between urban environments and rural environments. And I, I'd like to hear, hear a description of their understanding about those. Um, at this as, point, it, as it relates to the operation of the, of the, the operation of, mm -hmm. of, of, an, of, a, of, a, of a place that, that is an, uh, uh, an entertainment establishment. I, again, um, yeah, I'm just interested in that. Joyce, Fred, what else? Can you, what expand, a, can you expand on that more, Jonathan? But that's not clear to me. Well, I, I think running an establishment with a large footprint in a large in a relatively large city, be it Revere or Springfield or and I understand they haven't run the establishments in Springfield. Um, it, it's, a, it's a different activity than running an establishment. On a in a in a small town with um, with just a different environment, and I and I'd like to I I personally want to understand how an experience in a large envi urban environment is not better or worse, but how it is different than an than, than what they anticipate, or how it is similar. To how they anticipate um, operations in in a in a town that's fifteen hundred people. That's all. And I, I would like to hear from the consultant for the 
adult entertainment and what his role will be going forward and what he plans to do as far as education training uh, on an ongoing basis because they hate to see a facility like this open up with you know a, a one-shot lecture from a consultant and then he goes away. In, right. in that, and that would happen at the at the continue uh, at the next public or continuation of this public hearing. So you're asking for him to be in attendance. I would like to have him in attendance. Him being Sean Miranda or Peter D. Pierre. No, that's P that's P. Oh. I'm sorry. Yes, Peter D. P. D. P. E. S. A. Yes, D. E. P. E. S. A. I, I apologize. I'm confused. I guess I thought that Sean was the Boston police officer. Yes, he is. Sean uh, Miranda is the Boston police officer, and then I have uh, we have someone else that is assessing us on the adult entertainment industry side, who's Peter De Pisa. Who, um, as far as he was, I mean, he's he's been in this industry since he was a young boy. He. Um, started working as a teen or like a, once he was 18 and then bought the establishment from his uncle with his brother. Then they bought a second establishment and now they have a third, a third one, I believe in New Hampshire. So um, yes, I, I, I'm not sure who would mention if he's going to stay in. Yes, he's, he's been in, he's um, an acquaintance of mine for a while and he's planning to stay in the operations. Um, Hopefully also he's invested also like in real estate in that area. So it's not there. None of these people are going away. They're there's they, they've been friends of mine and acquaintances. And now they're going to um, help me on a, on a business area. And um, they're, they're there to help out. And we also have other people that know about more about the area, because I understand also the concern about um, the difference between urban and rural areas. I would I would like to request that he also be included in the conversation with uh, with Sean and, and Chief Savini. Oh, perfect. Yes, I, I'm sorry I didn't invite them into this one. I, I, I wasn't aware of what to expect about this hearing or who was going to be present. That's why I didn't let them know. Yeah, okay. Well, that's, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Fine. And, and Jonathan, if, if I could just ask, um, in terms of a security plan, uh, I'm looking at the entertainment license conditions for the current license, and it does talk about the development of a security plan as as attorney lester mentioned um no later than 30 days after the issuance of the license are is the board um looking for a security plan along those same timelines sooner later mm. um and then i have another follow-up question yeah i i guess I, i'd be more comfortable voting if i knew that the security plan had been reviewed by the chief and um, I mean, in the security plan, it, it needs to address basically, I mean, really safety for not just the people who are, you know, abutters and, and in the town, but for the employees, right? Because your employees are kind of in vulnerable positions, right? What kind of um, security is there for them as well? I, I'd be more comfortable voting if that plan is made and reviewed by our police chief before I was asked to vote on it. I'm just, that's what I think. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Yep. So, I'm and fine and with if that. that means it would take like four weeks rather than two weeks, we tend to meet about every two weeks. Um, and that, it, then it might be that that affects our choice of the date certain when we continue the, the meeting. Yep. But you guessed my follow-up question, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd, let's, let's see, let's, let's have, have, and then, and then, we can see the plan and we can also get uh, Chief Savini's um, reaction to that plan. Uh, I assume that perhaps that plan will be I, maybe uh, edited uh, after the conversation with, with Chief Savini because I think he knows the board somewhat well and he can anticipate our concerns at some level. Um, but yeah, that'd be great if, if, we could, if we could see that before we are asked to vote up or down on on, on the request for both the liquor license and the um, entertainment license. So then what do we think that, and I guess this is a question for uh, uh, for the chief and for the applicants, what do we think our timing would be for that? 
I would personally love uh, maybe a 30 to 45 day timeline to coordinate both of these gentlemen to be on site at the building uh, and have a conversation with Chief Savini. Um, 30 day minimum for this 45 would be great. And that Brian, would give why us- Why don't we say March 30, Brian? What do you, what does the board think? Yeah, I'm going to go over my calendar here. If it works for them, it's fine with me. Like five weeks from now? Yeah. Uh, Actually, closer to six. That's, yeah. Um, your, next, your next scheduled meeting would, your next scheduled regular meeting would be March 9th and then March 30th. Yeah, okay. I'm not comfortable with the 9th. I'd, I'd rather do the 30th. I want to mm -hmm. do this. I think it's important that we have a security plan that everything be in order that you that you need yeah. in order to be able to vote on this at the next meeting. Well, then, is it smart to, to push this until the second Wednesday in April, just so that it gives everyone a chance to 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 talk, to meet, to write, uh, to edit, and to plan for inevitable hiccups that 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 sometimes happen when you're um, when you're under a time crunch. I would prefer the middle of April to to put everybody's schedules together. Okay, so that date would be the if I know my I can't do that. What, what date is that? The thirteenth, I think. Thirteenth. I'm cheating. I'm looking at a calendar. Oh uh, yeah. Thirteenth. Thirteenth. Yeah. Fine. Great. Jim, that works for you. Yes, I'll make it work. Okay, thank you. So then I guess I would move that we continue the hearing uh, to the April 13th at, oh, Brian, help me out. Should we make that 9 or 6.05? We usually have a few minutes worth of business to do at the start. Yeah, you can say 6 or 6.05, it's okay. Okay, I'll say 6.05 because- I'll I, second that like extra significant figures on things. And then um, um, the location will be, ha ha, gotcha on that Zoom. one. Zoom, I think we're still on Zoom. I don't know if we have any plans to, I don't think we have any plans to necessarily get off Zoom. Um, I would say Zoom until we change that plan, Brian. Yeah. Okay, but for the purposes of the continuation and yeah. not having to re-advertise, we would, we would uh, be right. stuck with our, not stuck, but we would, we would have to abide by our. I have no decision. problem abiding with that. Okay. As long as necessary. Okay, that's fine. No. All right, I've heard a motion and I've heard a second. All those in favor, Fred. Yes. Joyce. Aye. Me, yes, unanimous. And then I just wanna clarify that the Zoom link for the continued public hearing will, will be posted on the meeting agenda um, for the select board meeting for April 13th, if people are looking for it. Okay. And we are not allowed to change location once this is agreed upon, correct? We would, um, we could, we could, we could, we, it would require the re-advertisement of the, of the hearing, in my opinion. Okay. Well, right. when would this be advertised? It, um, it, we've already advertised it, haven't we? Right. And then we continue. So oh, okay. if we continue, we're fine. And keep okay. that. If we change location or something, we have to re-advertise. Okay. All right, so it is done. Zoom, April 13th, 6.05. I wanna thank um, everyone who attended tonight for their comments, their thoughtful comments and um, their, um, I, this is a, Joyce, my God, I need your grammar tonight. Their politeness, which is just <laughs> not working for me. Um, just take a breath, you can do it, John. But thank, thank you for everyone for, for being considerate of others and their opinions. I think the word you're looking for is decorum. Decorum, yes, thank you. That could be a wordle, but it's too big. All right. Um, thanks, everybody. We look forward to seeing you on the 13th, and we look forward to any, any, any updates you want to give in the, in the meantime. We're happy to, to, to read. And for those people in the, in the public, uh, I would start to look for the posting of the historical data around the security plan on our website in a very uh, transparent place in the next couple of days.
Thank Thanks, you. Everybody. Last Thank last you. thing before before we head out, um, Brian, for as I start to create um, presentation material, I can share it with you if that's okay, and you can forward it to the rest of the board. Yep, yep, that's the best way to do it. Beautiful. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Jonathan, Joyce, Fred, Attorney Lesser. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Um, all right, you guys. Um, we are going to move to COVID-19, but I do want to just be, be upfront that I do have a hard stop at 7.55, and I apologize if the meeting is not over by 7.55, and I'm guessing it will not be. Um, I will... I will transfer the role of the chair to the um, to the to the very competent vice chair uh, Joyce. Oh, thank you for that, John. Sure. Um, but for now, um, let's talk about our COVID nineteen policy. Uh, Brian, I understand the Board of Health is meeting on the first. Is that right? Yeah, the next meeting is March first, and I've asked the, the Board of Health to take a look at uh, the different uh, restrictions that they have in place and see if they're still appropriate based on the, the ever-changing conditions of um, the past two years. So um, I don't know that we need to spend too much time on it tonight, but um, mm -hmm. I think it's important that we that we escalate and de-escalate our restrictions based on the conditions. Um, so I just want to make sure we're staying on top of that. I, I would agree. I don't, I don't feel the need to have any conversation around this um, until we hear from the Board of Health and then we can comment on there. Yeah. Uh, over here. Just, uh, for, um, just so everybody, um, we can recall together, and probably Brian will remember the right date. The state is allowing us to do open meetings via Zoom until, does it July? Um, I think it's through the end of June. Uh, yeah. 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 So, um, and, and we've been lobbying heavily for, you know, greater remote participation because that's been a really big boon to participation. We get much better uh, participation. And, um, and uh, I mean, there's enough pressure on volunteers as it is. And many, many board members are volunteers. I know I'm on a, I'm on a board where they just, they only want to meet in person and I miss so many meetings. They're not getting any input from Waitley on account of the fact that they're, they're not really um, uh, making remote participation possible. So uh, I just wanted on the record that, that I, I really hope we can get the open meeting law opened up a little bit more so that we can do more remote participation by board members. I know we can fully let the public in remotely, but our, our current remote meeting um, law that we would revert to in July if they don't change it uh, would mean you need a quorum and including the chair in person in order for a board to meet. And that, um, um, I, I think we would get better participation, first of all, and I think we'd get better, uh, more people willing to volunteer if that quorum requirement uh, and that chair requirement were a little bit more flexible. Okay, so all right, that's my rant for the day. You only get one, so Perfect. that's it. Joyce, check the box on rant. Um, right. Old business to continue discussing potential projects to be funded through the MVP program. Brian. That's me, actually. Um, so just as a quick reminder, we submitted expressions of interest for two different types of projects. One was the solar batteries and panels for the town offices. One was the various um, permutations of culverts, either assessment or replacement or both. Um, we spoke to Andrew Smith, who's the local MVP representative for our area. He said um, he would recommend, he didn't say this per verbatim, but um, he insinuated that he would recommend either doing the solar project or the two-year um, whole shebang culvert project where we would do an assessment and then prioritize them and then potentially replace one of the culverts. Um, what I need from the select board is a decision as to which direction we should go in. Um, I made a quick breakdown of the pros and cons for each project. I can go through those if you would like me to, um, or you can voice your thoughts immediately if you have any preferences. Um, I'll follow your lead yeah. on that one. Can you tell me quickly, which page is this on the, the meeting materials? This um, So actually, I didn't provide any written materials. I was hoping oh, okay. you might be able to just talk about it. Oh, um, okay. 
All right. I, cool. Yeah, I know what my gut reaction is, but I'd like to hear what you have to say first. <laughs> okay, of course. So um, for the culverts, uh, we're aiming for a two-year project. The approximate total fee would be about 175,000. Um, pros, ability to incorporate citizen science, other youth engagement techniques, um, also the ability to incorporate climate data, support the need for the project with climate data, and it lends itself to nature-based solutions. Um, the con is that it's probably going to be one of many applications that have to do with culvert replacement and assessment, so it would be difficult to stand out in that sense. Um, with the solar panels, it would be a one-year project for approximately $264,000. Um, it's unique in that there aren't many other energy-focused projects that would stand out in that sense. And the potential for youth engagement is still there. We could probably include some sort of educational component for local students. Um, however, it doesn't lend itself to nature-based solutions. Um, Andrew emphasized a simple solution like producing a list of circuits to switch off during a power outage. Um, which might work for larger uh, communities that have a building manager, but it's hard to implement in Waitley who doesn't have that. Um, and if the panels are totally non-productive, it's only 7.5 hours of battery backup. So it's unlikely that um, the panels will be unproductive for the total 7.5 hours. I think they will likely kick in before then. Um, mm -hmm. One thing to note is that Andrew emphasized that um, projects will be weighted higher or better if they have nature-based solutions, community engagement, are supported by climate data, or support environmental justice populations. We don't have any environmental justice populations, but I think that the culvert project would likely lend itself better to nature-based solutions and community engagement and climate data. Um, but that's just my take. Mm. Okay. Um, Why does the solar have relate to climate data? I guess solar would relate to climate data. Yeah, I was thinking more climate in terms of like actual physical climate, increased preci precipitation, et cetera. So mm -hmm. you could connect solar to broader energy resiliency and clean energy. Yeah, I because that's, I mean, it, you don't hear about like, um, you know, so, solar farms don't have spills, right? Yeah, <laughs> they, absolutely. Uh, you, know, they, you, you don't have propellers that break. Um, there, I mean, there's that. That's a, that is a resilient against uh, storms and so on, um, and and also kind of in the context of, you know, talk of rolling brownouts that we don't have any control over from the New England grid operators. That that um, that really should be. I mean, when the grid goes down, the solar actually doesn't necessarily go down at all. I mean, it only goes down when the sun goes down. So. I mean, I guess so. I've revealed my bias as to which one I think is more important to for for us to try and pursue. And I, but I'm also hearing you about um, what might be more e more likely to be funded. Well, one other positive thing about the solar is that um, Waitley is a 10% match community instead of 25%. So we're mm -hmm. getting a really good bang for our buck if we do end up going with the more expensive project. And I think that that in this case that would be the solar. Um, so it would be a really good deal for us. Uh, Hannah, is the is the in, is the uh, match in kind or is it cash? I believe it is. Um, I believe it can be either. Brian, I'm not entirely certain. I can look that up. Um, okay. I'm not. I'm not sure. I was going to assume it was. A lot of the grant programs are going to cash now, yeah. uh, but we can double check. But so 26, 26K is not that much. No, it's not. I'm just asking, just so we have all the information at our, at our fingertips. No, um, it's um, 264, not 26. Sorry. 10% oh, no, of it is 26. Oh, yeah. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> no. Um, you know, I, I, I'm a solar guy. Um, I'm a any clean energy guy. Um, uh, and, and, you know, if, if Whitley had wind, I'd be all about that too, but we don't. Um, I, I, I want to go with what we think is most fundable. Um, I think that anything we can do and then highlight it is going to push the importance of 
all communities doing MVP and all communities don't do MVP right now. So I, I, I would prefer to make sure that we have as good a shot as possible to win an award. Um, I, I'm fine with either one. I, I, I love the thought of solar, but if, if Hannah, you think that um, we have a much better shot at, at getting a, an award that deals with culverts, then maybe we should do that. I, I know that puts me squarely on the fence and I'm not helpful. <laughs> but based on Hannah's presentation, it sounds like there are issues with either one. That with the culverts, you've got more communities going in that direction and we would stand out more with solar, but it doesn't have all of the elements as well covered. Right. So right. It's, it sounds like a, a toss up for which has a better chance of getting funded. See, Fred was just as helpful as I was. <laughs> that's why I brought Absolutely. it to you guys. <laughs> that, that's what I was aiming for. Too. I mean, I know whichever we end up choosing, Anna will find a way to make it sound like we check all the boxes, right? I'll um, do my best. Yeah. Anything, it, it, I, if that's the case, yeah. then we go with solar because it will not be lost in the culvert crowd. Right, uh -huh. yeah. And we, we do have a pretty good track record for doing solar correctly and we we you know we're a solar community um I, I i would argue we're probably top in terms of per capita we're probably top 10 to 20 in the state in terms of per capita um of course i could be dead wrong about that too but you know mm -hmm. uh i i guess i i i lean i lean towards towards solar because i also think that we might have a better shot at getting other grants that can help with with culverts I agree with that as well. And I also think about the timing. If if uh, you said the solar is a one-year project and yeah. the culvert's a two-year project, so if we do the culverts first, then it would take two years, then we could do solar. But if we do it in the reverse order, if we hurry up and get the solar done, then we could apply for the culverts in mm. how many of our months from now. So if we want to do both, I think that's the quickest way to get solar first. Oh. I mean, if we do both, it, it will take. It, it sounds like we're leaning months. towards solar yeah. first. Solar I was in motion. I would, I would make the motion that we prioritize the solar project over the culverts and um, give hand of that that feedback. Do we need a vote on that? I will second. Yeah, we do. I think all those in favor, Joyce. Aye. Fred. Yes. Me. Yes. So moved. Um, okay. Application to the Shared Streets and Spaces Grant Program. That is also me. So um, just as a quick background, this program is administered by MassDOT. I'm hoping to apply to the equipment only grant to install four fix-it bike service stations around town. I'll share my screen so that you can see a map. Yeah, I saw that. That looks great. Yeah, I'm really excited about this project. I think it'll be an easy implementation um, and it'll be a great benefit for the town. So the, right the, now. Sorry. sorry, I had one question. Is is this amendment? I would love to see one if it's possible at West Waitley Chapel. Oh yeah, okay. Um, I will write that down. So, um, Right now, we're trying to keep the budget under 10000 so that um, we don't have to go through procurement processes. Um, mm. I will request a new quote to include the new station okay, so as well. There are people who use, you know, who are out in West Waitley yeah. and everything else. This is all concentrated in the East. Well, there's yeah. one that's in, there's, there's one for a town. Where is that? That so was one at like town you, hall or, or the library. I can't remember which one. The library. Right. The library. But what's yeah. the one to the left of the library? Uh, the library is the farthest west one. And then it's the town safety complex. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. I was. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That sounds great. Thank you for the feedback. Okay. Um, yeah. So these stations will include uh, maintenance tools as well as an air pump. Um, you can see the locations on the map. We can choose from any of these uh, finish colors available for the station. Um, and there are no match requirements. We'll be reimbursed for the entirety of what we're awarded. So it's basically free money. Um, the reimbursement will work like any other municipal aid program like chapter 90 or complete streets through MassDOT. 
Um, our approximate cost right now, including shipping and additional fees is about $9,800. Um, my hope is to borrow it from ARPA funds and then it'll be reimbursed. Mm. Um, and the audience is primarily for local folks, casual bicyclists, people who don't already own tools like this. Um, the hope is to kind of eliminate any economic barriers to a more active lifestyle and um, bicycling in Waitley. Um, so what I need from this select board is approval to submit this grant to MassDOT. I, I wish you didn't have to get approval from the select board to submit something as simple as a grant, but if you say that that is necessary, I would entertain a motion. I move that we give Hannah the green light on this grant application. I second. All those in favor, Joyce. Aye. Fred. Yes. Me, yes. Liquor license, Quan Quan Farms, uh, seasonal liquor license. This is something we do every year. Personally, I yep. do not see any reason to um, spend a lot of time on this. It, it, it seems like a, a, a pretty yeah. automatic thing because they're pretty good at what they do. Yeah, we haven't had any trouble um, with serving minors or anything like that. So I, I'm ready to go to a motion unless- no, I'll, I'll move we grant the license, the seasonal license. For Quan Quan. Uh, I'll second that. Uh, all those in favor, Fred. Yes. Joyce. Aye. Me, yes. Done. Um, sadly, accept the resignation of Cynthia Sanderson from the Board of Registrars uh, and to appoint Josh Harris and Nathan Norris to the Board of Registrars. So I just uh, need to mention that it's 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 Nate Norse and there was a typo on the agenda. Oh, it's Nate Norse. Oh, okay. All Norse. right. Yep. My bad. Good. So we, I know them. Okay, good. Because um, I was going to say, I don't know Nathan Norris, but, but <laughs> Nathan Norris, good. If you say it fast enough, it sounds right. Yeah, yeah. I'll hear, I, I hear a motion. Um, so moved. Second. All those in favor, Joyce. Hi. Fred. Yes. Me, yes. Annual town meeting date changed to Tuesday, May 24th, 2022. So at, at the last select board meeting, the um, there was discussion about changing the date of the annual town meeting to later in the year. Um, so that I think so that it could be held outdoors and the weather would be nicer. Um, and we looked at, uh, sometime in June, but a lot of June is, uh, taken up by local elections and then the celebration of the 250th. Um, so really the next available time, not including Memorial day would, would be Tuesday, May 24th. Um, all of the town meeting, um actors can make it um not that it's a show but some people <laughs> might think it is um are available from may 24th so um that would be a date that if you did want to move it that that would be feasible i would very much like to move it i think it makes all the sense in the world all right i move that we uh uh choose may 24th for special for our town meeting date annual town meeting date for this year 2022 second all those in favor, Joyce. Aye. Fred. Yes. Me, yes. Check that one off. A letter from the water commissioners for the use of CLFRF monies for the purchase of a storage shed and generator. Brian. So as you know, there's the CLFRF committee that's meeting. Um, and I think it, the process is going a little bit slowly. I think Fred might agree with that. Um, no. I would disagree. It's going a lot slowly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think there was some some uh, displeasure with with the the like methodical pace that the committee's taking to um, solicit projects and and mm -hmm. and go through them and make recommendations. And I think um, you know I had a I had a, a I was approached by one of the water commissioners who was wondering what they could do to speed it up. I said, you can write a letter to the select board and let them know why it's urgent and why it needs to be done before the committee makes its recommendations. So you have a letter from, um, well, an unsigned letter, but I, it's from the water commissioners. Um, so. And it's in all caps. So it must be important. The, the only issue I have with the letter is that it doesn't have a dollar attached to it. And if the water commissioners can submit a proposal with the 
you know, e either, uh, you know, a specific dollar amount or, you know, uh, you know, pro forma invoice. I'm sure this committee will consider it. Committee or this board? This board. Well, we can't consider now. We don't have, there's no number attached to it. Right. Right, right now. Yeah. And I think that that committee meets before this committee does again. Yeah. And will they decide though at their next meeting? If I mean, it sounds like they're kind well, of well. That committee doesn't decide; it recommends. It recommends. Okay. So why don't we push the kick this back to them? Have them put a dollar sign, um, and then we'll take it up at the next meeting. Yeah, I, I would. I would hope that at the next meeting we have a number of different suggestions for spending coming from that committee, not just this one. Yeah. But I guess. But I guess for the record. I, I can sympathize with the need that the water commissioners are expressing. Oh, I, I, absolutely. Uh, but, but I but I agree with with Fred that without a dollar amount and not knowing, you know what what else is there, it's kind of hard to just take that one and say here here's your blank check, you know. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm sure that we we will take it very seriously when we get a dollar number. Okay. Yeah, as I said, uh, the that committee is meeting what Brian Monday. Yeah. And I I very much hope to have that uh, yeah. concrete is, recommendations for some spending will come out of that meeting. Yeah, and this, I hope hopefully that little light that light a little fire that you know people are wanting to bypass them. So. Well, I don't think it's a question of bypass. It's a question of trying to get something set of how they're going to be funded, especially you know, for the budget in particular with cap some capital projects yeah. that could come out of those funds. Is Are they going to recommend funding them? Yeah. You know, recommend us funding them or send them to town meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To the next meeting then. Um. Uh, Special town meeting, Brian, March 23rd. Yep. So special town meeting. Um, again, I think everybody that we need is available March 23rd, uh, 2022. Um, we don't need a, a motion or anything at this point. Um, what we're going to need, though, is I'm wondering if you have your calendars um, in order to meet the 14 day posting requirement, if you would be available for a short Zoom select board meeting on March 7th. That's a Monday. Yes, I'm fine. Um, I, I teach right until six on, wait a minute, oh, on that Monday, hold on. We could um, do it any, any time during the day, I think, if we. You're, you're talking about just, you know, a five or 10 minute meeting. Yeah, right. here's the Warren articles. Can you? Right. Yeah, if it's scheduled for right at six, I might be 10 minutes late. But uh, uh, it, as long as we can, if we could make it 6.15. 6.15, 6.30. Six yeah. we could do it earlier in the day. There are several slots earlier in the day that are also available. Let's do six fifteen. Okay. okay. Yep. And again, I'll, I'll get the the shorts. I, I assume it'll be a short special town meeting warrant out to you ahead of time. So it's just going to be a quick meeting. Okay. That's really only the only agenda item we expect on that meeting is the. Um, uh, approval of the warrant for the special town meeting to call the special town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, hey, Brian, I, I, before we go to grants, because I'm going to have to go, um, yep. I, I want to take this opportunity um, to get it out there that um, I have had a great 18 years uh, and I've loved being a select board member from Waitley, but um, in the interest of getting people to get excited about the election. I want people to know that I will not be seeking re-election um, coming up. I don't say that for fanfare. I just say that because I want to see real quality people uh, get out there and pull papers. Um, but it, it's time for, for me to do something else on my, on my Wednesday nights. Um, so I just wanted to let people know that, that that's the case. Um, again, no fanfare, just I, I just want, I want to give people an opportunity to get those papers out there, get signatures going, and uh, and 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 get their get their um, 
there are positions out there for people to decide who the next select board member will be, but I, I will not be a, a candidate. Is this a Tom Brady move? It is not a Tom Brady move. No, I, I you know, I, I don't. You're not moving to Tampa first? <laughs> I know. I should move to Tampa. I think you're going to Tampa, John. You're going to win a championship in Deerfield or something? Are you moving? Exactly. Yeah, no, that, that will not happen. So, uh, no, I, I'm not going to pull a Tom Brady, I, Michael Jordan, a Wayne Gretzky, or any of the other people who have um, come out of retirement. Uh, it is, it is, I'm going to enjoy um, having no obligations to go visit my son when he goes off to college and to watch my daughter play basketball and to grow a business that I hope will uh, makes me uh, famously wealthy. So um, that's it. Thank Jonathan. you all for, for, for being my colleagues. And Doc, you got a scoop. It looks like Chris was off the call at that point. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jonathan, I wanted to tell you that I, I have enjoyed watching you do your work on the board and uh, you're a very charming man. Thank I, you. Yes. Thank you. I found the one person. Outstanding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll have to think about an appropriate fanfare. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know. yeah. yeah. Um, and hey, Brian, I do want to tell. Oh, no, that's right. No worries. I'll, I'll, I'll shoot Amy a, 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 an email uh, on, okay. on something else. So, all right. I, I do need to um, go to. And I think we're ready to adjourn. I don't I think, think there's anything else. Unless on. Brian has anything, we're, we're done. I just want to mention one thing real quickly. Um, we received a donation of, of two pretty much new glass uh, cases for postings uh, mm -hmm. from a company called Malvern Panalytics from Northampton. Um, so I'm planning on just writing them a thank you letter to, uh, yep. to let them know. Thank you for the thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. I guess so. That's great. Now I'm done. Okay. okay. Motion to adjourn. I'll second that. So, Fred, go ahead. No, I was going to second it. <laughs> All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Yes. Uh, me, yes. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Right. Good, Good night. Night, Good night everybody.